How's it going, Chip Drives? Me Chips here for their premiere episode of the Chip Tide Show. Now, seeing as this is the first episode, before we get started, I should probably explain what this show is going to be all about. Uh, it's basically like a podcast or something, in the sense that there's not going to be a whole lot going on on screen besides gameplay that may or may not have to do with what I'm talking about, so feel free to go and do something else and just listen if you don't care about that. Uh, each episode, I'm going to be talking about a different game, some good, some bad, some in between. But for today, we're talking about a game that falls into the first category and one of my favorite games of all time, Super Mario Galaxy. Now, before we get into it, I have one last special surprise for you guys to commemorate this occasion. For this first episode, I've decided to leave the studio behind and instead, seeing the subject matter and setting of the game we're playing today, I'm broadcasting this episode from outer space. I've had my assistant Richard buy us a spaceship off of eBay we launched on our maiden voyage about an hour ago, and it's been nothing but smooth sailing or flying, I guess, ever since. Now, you may be wondering, what's the point of doing it from space if it's just my commentary and it doesn't really matter uh, where I do it from? And to that I say, uh, yeah, you know what? I had not thought about that. Huh. Huh. Uh, but screw that, it's still awesome, and I only slightly regret spending the show's entire budget for the next few years on this spaceship. Uh, only slightly. Um, there's only one slight hiccup. We may have already broken the engine and are now drifting aimlessly through the cosmos with no hope of getting back, but aside from that, everything is peachy keen. And not to worry, I've got Richard working on them as we speak, and we brought plenty of water and food to last us a good while. Hey, speaking of which, Richard, can you toss me a sandwich? What do you mean you left them at home? Well, I thought you were getting them! Cause you're my assistant! What do you think I'm paying you for? Well, seeing as we have some time to kill and no sandwiches to eat, well, let's get back to the game, shall we? Now, my history with this game is quite storied. When me and my brother were young, our parents got us the newest and coolest console on the market, the Wii, for our birthday. And let me tell you, we played the heck out of it. We had dozens of games, but Super Mario Galaxy was easily one of our favorites. It was the first game we ever bought with our own money, and I have countless fond memories of playing it. Now, because of all this, there's a very strong possibility that I'm looking at it through rose-tinted glasses, but I've played it more times than I can count, and I still have fun with it every single time, so make of that what you will. If you've ever played a Mario game, you pretty much know what to expect from Mario Galaxy. It starts off on the night of the Star Festival, a holiday to commemorate a comet that passes over every 100 years. It doesn't seem that exciting to me, but the Toads seem to like it, so who am I to judge? Mario is heading off to see Peach, but surprise, surprise, Bowser shows up to crash the party. Now apparently, in the intervening time since his last invasion of the Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser has gained a flair for the dramatic, because he just rolls up in front of the castle with his fleet of airships all casual-like, then summons a UFO to laser the castle out of the ground and carry it up into the atmosphere. You may not like the guy, but you gotta respect his confidence. Actually, you know what, I take it back, because before he goes, he starts attacking the Toads. And if there's one thing you'll learn about me throughout this whole thing, it's that I freaking love Toads. These are my people, and when you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. I don't care about some freaking princess, no. I fight for the Toads. But back to the action, and Bowser, along with Peach and our hero Mario, are currently flying away from whatever planet the Mushroom Kingdom is on. As if things couldn't get any worse, a Magikoopa or Kamek, whatever you want to call him, shows up and blasts Mario away as the screen fades to black. When he comes to, he's stranded on a distant planet adrift in space, like a certain someone I know. 
But he is not alone. There are three space rabbits there who want to play a game of hide and seek with Mario. Think that's weird? Just you wait. The rabbits turn into little star creatures called Lumas and introduce Mario to their mama, Rosalina. That's right, before she was a regular in Smash and on the racetracks, she started here as a humble, I don't know, celestial being? Uh, she gives Mario a new spin attack, and then it's off to the races. It seems a little complicated of a setup for a Mario game, but the whole thing feels very epic, even cinematic, and it gets me pumped to play every time. Not even the fact that I am stuck on a spaceship with an assistant who doesn't know how to do his job indefinitely can dampen my spirits now. Let's play some freaking Mario Galaxy! After a short tutorial level, you find your first grand star and get teleported to the home of Rosalina and the Lumas, the Comet Observatory. This acts as a hub world for the game, so you'll be spending a lot of time here, but that's okay, because the whole thing is gorgeous to look at, and it's fun just to run around there. Rosalina informs you that the observatory is actually a spaceship, but it needs power stars to run. She tells Mario that if he helps her get as many power stars as he can, she'll fly into the center of the universe to confront Bowser. And that's basically the whole gist of the game. There are six domes, each of which has two to three main galaxies, each of which has three main stars. There's also smaller one-off galaxies, hidden stars, things called prankster comets, which appear in galaxies to add challenges to levels you've already done, and of course, each dome ends with a boss galaxy in which you have to take on Bowser Jr. or the Big Papa himself. Put simply, there is a lot to do in this game. One of my favorite parts about the game is all the recurring characters. Aside from the aforementioned Rosalina and all the Lumas, each world you visit is filled with all sorts of different interesting characters that are unique to this game. There are some weird gear robots, a chill penguin who teaches you how to swim, an entire kingdom of bee people, and of course, who could forget my personal favorite, the Nintendo legend himself, Captain Toad and the Toad Brigade. Nowadays, Captain Toad is everywhere, but this right here is his origin story. As I said earlier, I love the Toads, and the good captain and his crew are the creme de la creme of the whole freaking species. They show up all over the galaxies in their mushroom-inspired spaceships, helping Mario in his search for power stars. Yo, Nintendo, if you are watching this, first of all, appreciate the love. If you, uh, you know, ever feel compelled to send me some free stuff, hit me up, you know where to find me. But second of all, if you can make a sitcom or something about the Toad Brigade and their shenanigans, my life would be complete. There are five of them in total, each one has their own distinct personalities, and I love every single one of them. And yeah, sure, they do get into trouble a lot and need Mario to come and save them, but you know what? For all the danger they put themselves in to help Mario, it's the least I can do. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen the captain himself ever get caught. He's always sitting in his ship, a safe distance from the action. But, but I'm sure it's just a quiz. I mean, someone's gotta stay back and pilot the ship, right? Right? No, but, man, what I wouldn't give to hear that wonderful jingle and see Captain Toad swoop down to rescue us from this space prison, but alas. Uh, speaking of which, Richard, you got those engines started yet? No? Well, can you at least toss me a sandwich? Oh, wait. But enough about my not-so-secret love affair with Captain Toad, let's get back to the meat and potatoes of the game, and that's the actual levels themselves. They're all super fun and masterfully crafted, though they're a little different from those found in other 3D Mario games. For starters, they are extremely linear. Pretty much every level is just about getting from one platforming challenge to the next, with very little exploration required. Now, do not get me wrong, this is by no means a bad thing. Every level is super fun, despite, or sometimes even because of, their linearity, but I just thought I'd bring it up. But what really sets this game apart from the rest is its gravity. It's totally whack, and in the best possible way. Honestly, I'm not sure how I made it this far into the video without mentioning it, but hey, it's my first one. Cut me some slack. Many of the planets you go on around, but instead of falling off the edge, you can just run all the way around them. There's also a lot of places where the gravity can straight up flip you around. The boss levels in particular do this a lot. It can be a little confusing at first, but after the first few levels, you get the hang of it and it becomes really cool. The fact that the controls are super tight definitely helps in this regard. 
Controlling Mario in this game is super clean. While you may not be able to borderline fly across the level with Cappy like in Odyssey, you still get your standard jumps, triple jumps, long jumps, the works. A new addition to this game that I mentioned earlier is the spin. It can be used to stun enemies and break stuff, but more importantly, it gives you a little extra mobility in the air. You can use it to extend your jump or change direction mid-air, and it has saved me from countless deaths. However, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't bring up what I know you're all thinking about. This is a Wii game, so of course, there are motion controls. The spin is activated by a simple shake, not too bad. But there are some galaxies that use them more, shall we say, extensively. There are three main types, ray surfing, ball rolling, and bubble blowing, all of which are controlled completely by moving and tilting the Wii Remote around. Uh, if you don't like this, the good news is, each type only shows up two to three times throughout the whole game and are completely skippable. But if you are one of those people who complain about motion controls, I've got a little tip for you to make it a little easier. Get good. I grew up on the Wii. I've trained for this my whole life. I am the king of these things. You think some freaking ray is gonna stop me? Even in this zero gravity environment, I'm the best. Nobody can touch me. Later on in the game, you unlock these three secret levels called the Trial Galaxies by finding three hidden green stars, and each one is themed after a different one of these types of motion control levels. Yes! Finally! This is it! A chance to test my skills in the ultimate motion control gauntlet. Uh, there's only one problem, I'm having trouble getting them to actually open. I made it to this planet and completed these guys' little practice rounds, but I can't figure out how to get to the actual trials. Oh. Oh, those WERE the trials? I thought that was a warm-up! You dare call that a challenge? Can nobody stand up to the king? <sighs> okay, okay, deep breaths, calm down. Back to the matter at hand. Um, alright, well, I don't really know how to segue from that, but, uh... The atmosphere! It's great! And no, I don't mean literally, most of the game takes place in outer space, so there really wouldn't be an actual atmosphere? No, I'm talking about the game's whole look and vibe. They definitely play up to the game's celestial setting, and the whole game is filled with these vast space vistas that are gorgeous to look at. Now, I'm not a big graphics guy, I don't really care that much about how a game looks, but I will say that this game, despite being on the Wii, which is not known for its graphical prowess, looks stunning. Aside from that, every single level feels new and unique. One moment you're flying through an asteroid belt, the next you're in a haunted mansion with Luigi, then you're blowing up a toy robot and selling straight out of Toy Story. The variety keeps the game from getting repetitive and stale. And you can't talk about this game without bringing up its fully orchestrated soundtrack. I'm sure you could tell from the background music in this video, but each track is better than the last, and it might be my favorite video game soundtrack of all time. And actually, you know what, now that I think about it, I'm gonna call this one right here and just listen to the whole thing for the next 10 hours. Richard has yet to get the engine started, so we're stuck here, and I've got nothing better to do and no sandwiches to eat. Have a nice day, go play this game, it's freaking tight, and take it easy. Several song-filled hours later. Well, that was great. Now what? Hey, uh, any luck with getting the engine started? Really? Well, let's go! Wait, 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 Richard, Richard, that's the wrong way. No, that's the moon, we gotta go back to Earth the other way, turn around. Hold on a second. That's no moon. It's a space station. Richard, turn this thing around. What? What do you mean you can't? Track your beam. That's not a. Be careful. Business. What you wish for. Here. <laughs> Did you ever learn? <laughs> come on, come on, give me that wheel. Hey guys, just wanted to come in here real quick at the end for a real outro to thank you so much for watching the first episode of the Chip Tide Show. If you like the episode or have some suggestions to make it better, either way, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your feedback. If you're excited to see more from this series, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, all that good stuff, and consider sharing this video with a friend in some way, shape, or form. Any and all support in the early days of this series will help tremendously. If you want to stay updated on all things Chip Tide, you can follow me on Twitter at the Chip Tide. Easy to remember. Links in the description down below. I'm gonna to try to have new episodes coming out every few weeks, so stay tuned for episode two. But until then, for real this time, don't forget to take it easy.